This is the first part of a brand new mycology project. This is the start of a brand new project. It's a mycology project. We're gonna be growing button mushrooms indoors in monotubs, but we're, we're gonna grow them together. We're gonna to grow them from start to finish. And this is all gonna start right out there in the kitchen. So I'll see you out there. Is that a good enough intro? So for starters, this is just your, your standard grocery store button mushroom. This is what we're gonna be attempting to grow from something microscopic over the next few videos. Now the microscopic way that we're gonna start growing these button mushrooms is with this right here. This is what's called a liquid culture syringe. Just like the plants we've been into, just like the reef tank we've built, uh, there's, a, there's an entire world of, of mushrooms just waiting out there for you too. And uh, this particular one, says portabella on it. I don't know if you can actually read that. Now a button mushroom is simply a, uh, a small baby version of a portabella mushroom. A cremini mushroom is another mushroom that you've probably seen in the grocery stores. And that's sort of like a teenager version of a button mushroom. So you've got a button mushroom, then you've got a cremini mushroom, which is just a bigger version of a button mushroom. Then you've got a portabella mushroom, which is sort of, I guess you could think of it as an adult version of a button mushroom or a cremini mushroom. It sounds a little bit confusing. It's actually not confusing at all. Basically the grocery stores have been selling one kind of mushroom and 90% of North America is eating these things because they're so dang tasty. I prefer the button version because you can cook them up, you can eat them whole. I usually like to kind of chop them in half and you can add them to absolutely anything. Now let's go through all the different equipment that we're gonna use for this project. First and foremost, we're gonna use what's called a, a grain spawn jar. You can also use these things for other things such as creating your own liquid cultures, just like what's in this syringe right here. This is actually a lid that I created myself. I 3D printed this thing. It's carbon fiber. I went through all sorts of tests and trials and tribulations putting this thing together. I'm awfully proud of it. And this is gonna be the first project that I'm actually kind of using this, um, you know, in a, in a real life situation. Basically, we've got a tub full of grain right here and we're gonna put just a little bit of that grain in each one of these jars. We're gonna put it in this pressure cooker back here to sterilize everything. And then once all that's done, we're gonna take our liquid culture syringe right here. We're gonna inject it into this little injection port on the top of the lid there. The little mushroom cultures that are swimming around in this syringe called mycelium are gonna dive into this grain. They're gonna start eating all that stuff up. It's full of all of the nutritious food that they love to kind of munch on. So they're gonna be reproducing like crazy. They're gonna take over this entire grain jar. And at that point, we're gonna move them into the next step or the next part of this, uh, of this mycology project. So the first thing we have to do is we have to decide how much of this grain we're gonna put in each one of these jars. So because we're gonna be simmering this grain and basically filling it up with moisture, uh, it's gonna expand in this jar. So we wanna fill it up about a third of the way full. And for me, that's about a half a cup Per, uh, per jar. So for our project, we're gonna create four different grain spawn jars. And for that, that'll be about two cups of grain. And then, of course, we'll throw a little extra in there because you always wanna have a little extra in your pot. Now, the reason that we're creating four different grain spawn jars is because eventually that liquid culture that we shoot into the grains in here, it's gonna take over all of the grains. And at that point, we're gonna take the grains that the mushrooms have completely taken over, and we're gonna transfer them to what's called a monotub. For this project, we're gonna be using two different monotubs. So we're gonna have two different grows going on. And the reason that I'm gonna use two different tubs like this is number one, I'm gonna stagger the grows so that I don't always have mushrooms popping up in both the tubs at once, um, you know, more than I can eat. One of the selfish reasons that I'm actually doing this project is because I myself just wanna have a continual, you know, ongoing button mushroom harvest. And then the other reason that we're using two different tubs and four different jars and spreading our mushrooms out between so many different containers is again, contamination. So with mushrooms, with mycology, sanitation is very important. Cleanliness is very important. It's really easy, especially at the beginning stages, for, uh, for other contaminants, for molds and bacterias and all of the stuff that's kind of flying around us all the time that we don't even realize is there. If any of that starts to compete with that mycelium before it's actually kind of got its strength up, it's simply gonna take over and ruin the mycelium as well as any uh, you know, hope we had of turning that mycelium into actual mushrooms that we can eat. But by spreading our spawns out between four different jars like this, uh, two jars per tub, then at least if one of them gets contaminated in the early stages when it's most susceptible, 
well, we'll be able to just kind of throw that one away and still have three others to, to work with. We're gonna actually simmer this grain to add moisture to the inside of it to make it nice and, and juicy for that mycelium to munch on. But before we actually get this thing on the, on the cooker, we need to rinse it and, you know, just kind of clean it up a little bit just to make things a little nicer for our mushrooms. With mycology, just like all the rest of the uh, of the nature sciences, everything smells good. Working with these rye berries right here smells delicious. Um, working with mushrooms and mycelium, and uh, every step of the process. You might even think that mushrooms are are not going to smell that good, but just everything about them has this earthy, sort of nutty in a lot of cases, just delicious kind of like clean farm laboratory smell that I love. I like to swirl the water just to make it a little bit more entertaining. So we've got our grain in our pot here. Take this thing into high gear and uh, get this water inside of here simmering. I'll show you when they're actually ready. I learned a trick on the internet uh, where basically you can use your fingernail to kind of test when the, uh, when the rye berry is, is just juicy enough for the mycelium to be able to break in there and, uh, and gobble up all the goodness. And while this is cooking, let me point out a few more things about these uh, custom carbon fiber grain spawn jar lids that I created. Number one, of course, they've got a heavy duty rubber gasket in there. The rubber gasket is gonna make everything airtight inside this jar. Again, we don't want any contaminants to get in here, especially at the beginning stages when there's gonna be nice juicy grain in there and all that mycelium is gonna be in its infant stage just gobbling that stuff up. And this little doodad right here, that comes with a teeny little carbon fiber cap on it. Well, what we're gonna do after we pressure cook these grain jars is we're gonna remove that carbon fiber cap. And then what we've got right there is what's called a PTFE filter. And that's just gonna allow for some gas exchange. Everything that's going on inside of these jars while the mushrooms are starting to you know, become mushrooms uh, it's going to produce some, some gases that need to escape, and that's exactly what that little filter thing on the top of these uh, grain jar lids is for. And oops, there's one thing that I almost forgot, but fortunately discovered before it was too far along. We want to add just a little bit of gypsum, and we just want to pour that into the water so that it can soak into the grains. Gypsum is one of those things that mushrooms just love. You're gonna to have to look up on the internet the specifics of why mushrooms love gypsum so much, but it's gonna be used in the substrate when we're growing them in those bigger monotubs in there. It's uh, used when we're preparing the grains like this right now, and it's just one of those things that mushrooms love. Quick update, we've got our grain boiling. So we're gonna turn the temperature down on the induction burner just to kind of keep this thing simmering. Also, I think it goes without saying, but every once in a while you want to give your grain a little stir just to kind of keep them from burning to the bottom or anything like that. So it's been about probably 30 minutes. I'm starting to see a few bursted kernels, but not too many. Okay, so what you definitely don't want is you don't want bursted kernels, which we don't have. I'm pretty happy with the consistency. And then if you can see this one little kernel right here, what you want to do is just kind of take your fingernail and just squish it a little bit. If it's making a little crease and you can feel a little, a little squish on the inside, you can kind of tell it's full of juice. That's when you know it's, it's ready. So now that we've got our grain simmered and everything ready to go, let's just pour everything through our strainer here. all the moisture that's gonna need to be inside of this, these rye berries is, uh, is already in there. And now that we've got all of our berries drained out, what we wanna do is we wanna dry them a little bit. We want the outside of the berries to be nice and kind of crisp and crunchy and give the, uh, give the mycelium just a little bit of a workout to get into the inside, you know, juiciness. But we want the inside to remain juicy. So we're gonna put it down on this towel here for just a little bit. And then every once in a while, we're gonna come through here and we're just gonna sort of spread it out and let this stuff sit and air dry. And from here, we'll begin to practice one of the many lessons that you'll learn as you dive into the world of mycology. 
and that is patience. We've got to wait for this grain to dry out. Once we actually get these things all done and sterilized and inoculated and we get our liquid culture, we get our mushrooms squirted in there, from there we're going to have to wait. So it's been about an hour. It's time to grab our jars. Did you hear me say jars or was the clang too loud? And you can tell the grain's done because when you rub your hands over it like this, there's still a little bit of moisture. I could probably let it dry longer, but you won't feel much moisture. So now it's time to take each of our four jars and uh, you know, whatever, whatever scooping apparatus you wanna use. We'll just load up. It should be about two thirds of the way full by the time we've actually kind of spread this out between all four different jars. We uh, actually might have enough grain to do yet a, uh, another fifth jar. We've got just a little bit of water in our pressure cooker. We've got our grain jars. And now we've just got to cap off each one of these jars with our custom carbon fiber lids. One of the things you want to remember at this stage is you don't want to tighten this all the way. You want to leave it about a quarter of a, uh, of a turn loose. And the reason for that is so that the pressure can actually get into the, uh, it can break through the seal that's in there and it can pressurize all the grain. It can actually get in there and do all of its sterilization. Once we pull it out of the pressure cooker, of course, we're going to tighten everything up and make it all, all nice and sealed. But, uh, but for now, you want to leave that about a quarter of the way unturned. And then all we got to do is load each one of these down into the pressure cooker here. And then of course we have to seal the lid on and crank the power up as usual. Once there's a steady stream of steam coming out of this little vent right here, we're gonna put the cap on. We're gonna wait for this gauge to get up to 15 PSI. Then we're gonna set the timer on here to 90 minutes. And then when all that's said and done, we should have sterilized, hopefully not going to get contaminated grain jars.